I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with all of us strangers, cinematographer Jamie Ramsey. Uh, now, what were your initial thoughts about this interesting kind of ghost story uh, when you first read the script? Um, you know, it, it's it's quite it's quite rare in this day and age to read a script that that really feels fresh and new and interesting. You know, um, you know, it feels like we're you know, in this age of sort of um, the streaming revolution, it just feels like you read a lot of the same sort of regurgitated um, iterations of concepts and ideas. And, you know, this was one of the very rare moments where I've read a script and been so enthralled by the subject matter that I haven't been able to put it down. Um, and And this is what happened with all of us strangers. It just felt like something really fresh. And you know, strangely, um, it's strangely current post sort of the the whole COVID, the whole COVID psychosis. It, you know, it felt strangely relevant, um, yet its 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 bones just felt really, really fresh and interesting, and, and it felt like something I hadn't read before. So, you know, as a, as a creative, as a filmmaker, um, you know, those moments don't come come across often, um, come across your path often. So. You know, when I when I read this and 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 I had these feelings, I thought, Chief, you know, Shepard, this is you know a really a unique opportunity to you know to get involved. Uh, and did you have immediate ideas uh, for how you wanted to shoot it, or or were there certain scenes that really you were able to visualize in your head uh, as soon as you read it? Um, you you know when, when you. You know, for me, for me, when I first read a script, um, you know, that that's a very formative um, process, you know, the first reading, because, you know, that's when I really feel like your intuition really responds to the subject matter. And, you know, it, it for me, it, you know, in, in that first reading and that first relationship with the script, that's when that's when the feeling is first exhibited. Um and for me, I wouldn't say it was it was as specific as thinking of of certain ideas, but it was more about the feeling that that the script when reading it, the script made me feel a certain thing. And 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 it's it's you know as a cinematographer, it's how do you how do you translate that feeling into 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 your specific skill? And you know one of one of the one of the strong feelings um, that I got off um, all of our strangers when I read it was 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 one of this kind of um, this sort of haunting nostalgia that 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 one can feel when reminiscing about the past or when when dealing with them um, you know past traumas or or, or or even happy moments from the past it's it's that feeling of nostalgia that um that you get from a good memory of, of something that that sits in the back of your mind that 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 brings back a certain feeling and um you know i, I think you know very early on feeling that that was something that I wanted to carry through um, with the film. And, and that, that really did actually coincide with, um, with Andrew Haig's vision of the movie too, which was, you know, this, this idea of, of, of bringing back the, you know, this sort of analog nostalgia that, that existed, um, you know, for the character and also for Andrew back, back in, in, in his formative years in the eighties and early nineties. Uh, and what was it like working with uh, Andrew Haig? I believe this is your first film uh, working with him. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's not the last because, um, you know, Andrew um, Andrew's one of those very rare directors um, or creatives. And let me just say creatives that are that are brilliant, but also just really humble um, and warm and wonderful human beings. You know, um, I think... I think a lot of creatives and uh, can be quite tricky people, and you know we we all have our, our our pros and our cons. But Andrew's just such a wonderful spirit to work with. You know, he he really he embraces um he embraces those um, people around him, um you know to 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 align with his thought process and build something with him. You know, which is you know what we all really want to do. And some you know sometimes you get into creative relationships that are more autonomous. But you know with Andrew. He really is um, such a collaborative creative, such a collaborative director, and you know, very specific about what he wants, but also has such an open ear to ideas and suggestions, and um, and and just a, a very warm collaborative process. Um, and you know, the 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 nature of the film is is kind of ambiguous in that it's it's you know kind of 
supernatural in a way, but like almost figurative in the way it's handling, uh, you know, whether this is a haunting or whether this is his subconscious or uh, what's kind of happening. How do you balance that, uh, you know, kind of sense of magic and fantasy with, you know, kind of the real emotions, uh, you know, visually? Um, look, I mean, uh, you know, it, it is it is such a um, it's such a nuanced and 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 layered subject matter to 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 think about and to consider. Um, the way I went about it was very pragmatically. Um, you know, I just looked, I looked, I looked at the script and I looked at the two the the two worlds that were obvious in the script. You know, which was, um, you know, um, you know, um, Andrew Scott's um, sort of day to day life, and then the the world where he goes back and he he starts to reminisce with his parents right so so just i kind of simplified it and i just separated into those two worlds and i thought to myself okay fine the one world infiltrates the other and the you know the real world infiltrates the other world so it, it, you know there, there's there's a bit of a yin and a yang to it so um if if i subtly develop a look for either side one look will infiltrate the other and the other look will infiltrate the other and there'll be a balance that that is found somehow um and you know, uh, you know. I mean, I'm sure every filmmaker who's made a movie knows that. You know, when you're in the heat of battle, halfway through a movie, you know, you really rely on the simplicity of your of your initial um, of your of your initial sort of visual bible in order to help you through because you kind of you really get caught up mentally in the process. So it was the simplicity of creating these two worlds: one that was a bit more responsible, um, uh, um you know, using p potentially sort of more uh, sort of um, sort of motivated light sources and, and sort of practical color palettes and stuff. And, and then a secondary world, which was a bit more dreamy and, you know, using secondary colors and, and, you know, stuff that was a bit more sort of representative of, of, of his past and, you know, an eighties color palette or whatever, and, you know, lighting that's more indicative of that sort of era and just sort of blending the two of them together. And, um, you know, um, you know, just allowing those two worlds to find each other really, um, it, it, you know, in moments. I think, you know, one of the good examples of that was, um, you know, in Andrew's apartment, you know, he was, his, his apartment was uh, completely filled with um, things that were indicative of his past, you know, um, whether it was, um, you know, the wonderful art direction of our production designer or, you know, the, the color palette that we all sort of fell upon. Um, but, but um, you know, it was just how these worlds could hold hands and, and uh, you know, remind each other of each other, basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've seen you talk before about uh, sort of anchor point scenes, uh, you know, that shape the feeling of a narrative. Were, did you have those kinds of scenes that really kind of guided the way in this film that uh, that that were really central for you? Um, yeah, I, I think I think one scene that that would be nice to talk about would be um, you know the moment where um, Andrew he you know he's been at the club and then he ends up at his parents' home and and he he finds himself in his in his pajamas his uh, that he had as a child and he you know he goes he, he sneaks into bed with his with his parents you know and you know this was a scene that was you know obviously um, um, a, far, a far cry from reality and it was a scene that you know for all intents and purposes needed to feel as real as breathing but everybody knows that it was an impossibility. So, you know, we, Andrew and I spoke about it and we, you know, um, one of our, one of our reference filmmakers and one of our reference films, which we were quite sparing with was um, um, Bergman's uh, Cries and Whispers and, you know, just how Bergman kind of created this ex ex extremely surreal experience by the way the camera sort of breathed and moved through moments and highlighting characters and pulling us through scenes. And we thought, you know what, this this is actually a good moment to to really hold on a scene and and just allow a scene to play out in front of you and and allow the movement of the lens and allow the movement of the camera to be to be the the, the quill if you if you will um, in inscribing the emotion of the scene which was you know ultimately a moment where he was left completely alone um, after being presented with fi the finality of the police lights that reminded him of the night that his parents died. And, you know, it was a scene where we had to, we had to shoot it over and over and over again, because it was really tricky where we were switching characters, removing characters from the bed. Um, you know, we, you know, we were using a, a, a zoom lens in, in shot to kind of 
go from a three shot to a two shot to a one shot to reveal nobody in the bed. And I, I really felt the impact of that was so strong because, you know, ultimately when you come out of this daze, you were alone and he was left alone in bed. And I, I felt it was absolutely heartbreaking. And I think if there's any scene that was, uh, you know, a summary or a metaphor for the whole movie, that would be the one, you know. Uh, and you mentioned uh, Cries and Whispers being a reference uh, that you kind of referred to. Uh, were there any other uh, films or images that, you know, you kind of drew inspiration from uh, for this film? Um, you know what, to be honest with you, I, I, I really try to not um, pull visual reference from films, especially anything modern. Um, photography, absolutely. And, 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 you know, also, um, you know, um, sort of any other sort of creative platforms like, you know, paintings and things like that. But I would say, you know, one, one of our themes was the idea of um, sort of your, your self analysis, you know, the, the, your, your, the gaze upon oneself and, you know, how skewed that gaze can become depending on your own psychology. And I think, um, you know, um, one of the photographers that I love to look at is Sol Leiter and, you know, his use of reflection and how our reflection can really um, distort and, and, and shape um, the perception of a moment. And, you know, so I certainly looked upon some of his work, um, you know, in terms of painting, you know, Francis Bacon's work, you know, just in terms of the skewed perception was really something that was quite interesting. Um, so, yes, if I think back, yeah, you know, um, that, that sort of stuff really kind of gave moments of, of, of inspiration. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of all I can think of in, in this moment. Other, other film references? No, I think sort of we, we were quite sparing with that. I think Bergman, Bergman was 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 one of the only ones that I can that I can recollect. Uh, you, know, you know, working on the film, I imagine you're you're very close to it. It's it's kind of hard to kind of step back and get a sense of the whole thing. Like, have you had a chance to see the whole film? And if so, have you have you uh you know did any of it surprise you, or you know what kind of feelings did did it give you to see the film finished? Well, you know, I you know I, I've 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 seen the film in various stages of its readiness. You know, um, obviously there's the initial screenings where you know you give your feedback and. You know, ultimately, when the film really comes together, um, um, you know, I, I see it in the in the phase when I'm doing the color for the movie, um, and you know, when I saw it in its readiness, um, it left me speechless, to be honest. You know, because it really, it really became the thing that we all wanted it to become, and it, and it embodied the feeling that we all felt when reading it and when making it and um you know in those hallowed moments of incredible performance when the whole crew is completely silent and you're observing a moment of brilliance and you really hope as a crew and a contributor that that brilliance follows through to the edit and the final product you know that that feeling really came through and you know i i, I after watching it and um you know after watching it i i, I messaged andrew and i said you know this is this is something i've never seen before you know this is a really a really tragic, beautiful tale that it that 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 represents love and loss and trauma and 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 loneliness. That honestly, and I don't think there's a person in the world who, who can't respond to one of those things, or if, if not if not all of them. Uh, you know, and what kind of uh, inspired you uh, to become a cinematographer in the first place to to you know, work with images in the way that you do. Um, well, do you know what, for, 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 you know, when I, when I was a kid, you know, I was, I was, um, you know, uh, you know, I went to, to, you know, to, to school in South Africa and, you know, I, I, very early on, I realized that school really wasn't my kind of thing. And, it, you know, it turned out that I was, you know, um, dyslexic and, you know, reading and, and learning in a, in a, in a sort of a normal way it wasn't like the, the ultimate way for me to kind of embark on a, on a, on an educational journey. But the thing that really did respond to me was always visuals and observation, you know? So from a, from a very young age, I was, I was a consummate observer of life and, and of, of things. And, you know, I would, I would spend hours and hours and hours observing light and movement and people. And, you know, I would, I would always watch and learn and, and, and look and see. And, you know, I never really thought that that was, um, you know, a, a career path because, you know, um, you never taught that it could be, but, you know, the, the, you know, at the end of the school journey, it came to a, a point where, you know, one has to choose, to choose what one wants to do. And, you know, um, 
um, the whole film school thing came about. And, you know, in my first year of film school, um, you know, we had to choose cinematography, directing, editing, whatever it was. And um, I, I chose both cinematography and directing. And, it, you know, it just became extremely apparent in the first couple of weeks of film school that, you know, cinematography was um, was this like distant relative that I, I needed to meet and I hadn't ever met, you know. And, um, you know, and, and another thing that occurred in my in my in my youth was um, I, I was given a camera, a, a, a little stills, 35 mil stills camera by my by my grandfather. And what that did was, I mean, it was a terrible old thing, but what that did was it 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 turned this sort of peripheral observation, it brought it into into a lens, you know, so it it directionalized my point of view, which at the time meant nothing, but but in hindsight, what it meant was that I I was being taught to harness my 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 kind of scattered creative mind i was i was being taught to harness it and 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 pointed at things and you know that's one of the formative events that you you never know how effective that is on, on your life until you you step back with with hindsight and you know that was a really big that was a really big thing so you know a combination of things but you know cinematography is the only thing in my life that's ever really spoken to me like this and it's it's um you know it's a lifestyle and it's a, it's it's just it's a part of me to be honest well, I, I want to congratulate you on your work on this film. Uh, it's uh, quite beautiful, and the effect is uh, uh, really haunting. Uh, and I, I want to thank you for talking about it with me today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for giving me your time. 